The second scripture reading from the Old Testament comes to us from Proverbs 8, verses 1 through 4. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? Upon the heights along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates leading into the city at the entrances, she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. And then, reading from verses 22 through 31 in the same chapter. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. Before his deeds of old was appointed from eternity, from the beginning before the world began. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the earth or the fields or any of the dust of the world, I was there. When he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizons on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. God add blessing to the reading of the word. <clears throat> Before I discuss how faith works, uh, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Kim, who is sitting in the front row, and I'm going to have her stand up so that she, so that you can, uh, and turn around, would you please, so that uh, they can kind of see you. I'll show you off a little bit. <laughs> right, uh-huh. And uh, <clears throat> she has been with me now for um, how many years has it been? Uh, it's been it's been six, almost sixteen because this is uh, this is uh, 2016, and we were actually in a committed relationship uh, all the way through uh, from 2000. So uh, a very enjoyable relationship as well. So uh, I am also happy to be here as your uh, interim minister to uh, work with you and uh, to walk the faith with you. <clears throat> now how faith, faith works is an interesting kind of a question because we like to go forward without uh, looking at the manual that's what we like to do as human beings. If you're putting together a swing set, for example, and you're, uh, and you're going forward with that, generally speaking, uh, people will go forward without looking at the manual, and they'll have a lot of screws left over and that sort of thing, but they will have put the thing together, uh, sort of, and uh, just go on forward without uh, any instruction. Well, we have a tendency to do that in our lives as well. And then uh, as we go forward, we find ourselves sometimes uh, straying far from the place where we should be because we haven't looked at a manual, and uh, the manual is actually found here. And what we do then is we find, first of all, that we uh, sometimes have a lot of anxiety because uh, we're not sure uh, about what's going to happen in the future. We're not sure exactly which direction to take in our lives. Sometimes sometimes we're faced with challenges. Sometimes things happen that put us off a little bit because uh, they're tragic and uh, because they introduce a lot of uncertainty into our lives. We can experience deaths in the family. We can experience loss of employment. We can experience all sorts of things that uh, are contrary to what our plans would normally be. And because of that, uh, we experience uh, anxiety moving forward. We experience a kind of fear about what's going to happen, what the future is going to be like. And one of the things that faith teaches us, if we look at this manual, 
which we find in the Bible, one of the things that faith teaches us is that uh, we need not worry about the future as long as we trust in God. But that's awfully hard to do sometimes. Sometimes we find ourselves so tightened up by the anxiety and wanting to go our own way that uh, it is difficult to trust in God. We become like a person who has grabbed hold of a high-tension line or a line with a lot of electricity running through it, and because of the electricity, your hands will be tight on that line. And you can't release it. People have to pull you off of it somehow or stop the electricity because you can't release your hands. And we're like that sometimes. And God is telling us uh, in the Bible that we can actually release our hands, that we don't have to hang on so tight, and that we don't have to plan everything ourselves, that God wants to be involved in our lives in some ways. But we like to do things by ourselves quite often because, well, at one point when we were little children, we wanted to do things by ourselves too. And one of the first words that we learned in relation to instruction was, no, I'm not going to do it. No. And another thing that we we learn is that uh, if you run really fast, you can get away with your parents' You can get away from your parents and you can uh, go exploring wherever you want to go. For example, the middle of the street, one of the places that uh, kids run into. Uh, They run into various other places that they want to find out about and so forth. If you run very fast, you can get away from them because actually they're a little slower than you are. And we do that with... uh, With the instruction that we have from God, too, we sometimes want to follow our own way, and uh, that would be a natural tendency that we have as we establish independence. And because of that, we do find ourselves in places where we feel kind of alone and we feel anxious. But those are the places where God finds us, despite our natural tendencies to run off. Despite our natural tendencies not to follow the plan here, despite our natural tendencies to run off, despite our natural tendencies to say no, God chases after us like a good parent chases after a child. Because God loves us so much, and we read of that in Romans, God loves us so much that God will compensate for our lack of faith in many cases. But it is easier if we follow this word and if we know that God is going to be there because then when we do find ourselves in in situations where we're anxious, we know that God is going to be there. We have that trust. We have that faith. And when we follow God's guidance, we also have the trust and faith that we're going in the right direction. And we will uh, tend to find ourselves a little more calm than we otherwise would be. One of the great things that's affecting people in our society today is the sense of anxiety. The sense that you have to do everything for yourself. That you're, you're on your own. And God can, through faith, teach us to walk by faith... And then we don't have to do everything on our own. We can have the assurance that there's somebody there. We can have the assurance that there's somebody who's going to be watching our back. We can have the assurance that God has everything under control. In Proverbs, we find that God has everything under control because God made everything, and it speaks of the way in which God had even the companionship of the Son at that time because God was with the Son making the world. And we also read in John that uh, that the Son, Jesus, was with God from the beginning of time. They set things in place. They planned things far wiser than we could ever do it. 
And because of that, they know, God knows what our life is going to be like, and God knows how we can live our life according to this book that we have before us, which is our guide. And things are set in place with God's purposes. And if we follow this guide, we can follow those purposes, but we have a tendency to want to go our own way. For example, and men are famous for this, we tend not to follow a map just like we tend not to follow instructions. Yeah. I know where I'm going. I don't need to follow a map. I don't need to stop at that gas station. I know where I'm going. But uh, as Kim will tell you, my wife Kim, uh, I have a tendency to go the opposite direction to the right direction all the time. I have a tendency to go directly into the arrow that was supposed to point me in that direction in parking lots. It seems to be a sort of a natural tendency. I'll go into exit doors when I should be going into entrance doors. Well, it opens the same, you know, in Walmart. We have that uh, we have that tendency uh, in which we uh, we go about doing those things, and God's purpose we we uh, we're, we're not too sure about until we run into trouble of some kind or another. But God made things from the beginning with a kind of a purpose, and uh, we find that in Proverbs. He gave the sea its boundaries. And we read in verse 33, Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. And I also have to mention, that since Kim is right in the front row here, that uh, she has much instruction for me when I'm driving, and I ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, she'll attest to that. Yes, we we have a tendency to do a similar thing in relation to God because we have a tendency to think, we know, we know, you see, we know. A friend of mine was uh, in the North Woods, and this illustrates this. He was uh, going through the woods, and uh, he was lost. He was lost, and his compass was broken. He was convinced So he was trying to find his way, and as he tried to find his way, he saw off in the distance a friend of his who was also crawling through the swamp and the brush and everything. And uh, his friend was also under the impression that his compass was broken because when he called over, his friend says, yes, I'm lost. My compass is broken. Well, they took the uh, two of them together, the, the two... Uh, one compass and the other compass, and put them next to each other, uh, and they both pointed the same way. I have another friend who uh, <clears throat> goes uh, north every so often and into the woods and uh, actually carries three of those because he's not going to believe the first one. So he's not going to believe that. He's going to go in the direction he thinks is right. Now, we have a natural tendency to do that. It says camp is that way, and we have a tendency to go that way because we're sure we're right about where that is. And uh, God is very familiar with our tendency to do that. And there are many verses in the Bible which talk about how we uh, should follow God and, uh, and not be uh, stubborn like a mule in which we want to follow our own way and we refuse to have our head turned one way or the other. But we have a tendency to do that anyway. So it says then, listen to my instruction and be wise. If we're wise, if we listen to God's instruction, if we follow God in faith, we can save ourselves a lot of anxiety. God says, trust me, follow my instruction Our world is full of anxiety. There are all kinds of medications that people take, generally speaking, widespread these days because of anxiety. And yet God says, follow my instruction. And you can have a kind of a peace that you're headed in the right direction. 
You don't know the boundaries of the sea. You don't know all of the things that I've done in order to set the heavens in place. I know where you're going, and I know where you need to go. Just follow my instructions. I have insight here in the word for you to follow, if only you would. If only you would. Follow that instruction. And then everything is going to change. Everything is going to change. And that's another thing that we have difficulty doing. We, we, we don't follow instructions very well, but also we don't like change very well because we're not sure what's going to happen and that sort of thing. And God is likely to bring change into our lives. And when we have that change come into our lives... Sometimes we regard change with uh, a little bit of uh, suspicion. We're not sure where we're going and that sort of thing. We're at least familiar with what's happening over here. In my counseling experience, I can tell you many, many instances. I could tell you many, many instances where people go back to an abusive situation over and over and over again. Why do they do that? You would think to yourself from a logical standpoint that that would not be the case. Why do people go back? If they have someone who's abusing them, why do they go back quite often, especially in marital relationships where you have an abusive relationship? They often go back because that's what they know. That's what they know. And sometimes we'll go back to the life of anxiety because that's what we know. There's a certain comfort in going back to what you know as opposed to what you don't know. And we'll have a tendency to do that, but God is going to bring change into our lives because what's going to happen is that we're going to become, the more we follow God's instruction, the more we're going to become something new. Something which is very much against what the world's wisdom is and something which is uh, very important for the world. We're going to become people who love and have the freedom to love because we're not filled with the anxiety that we had before. We know that there's a purpose, and we know that God has a way for us to go, and we're going to love people in ways which the world cannot understand. Why would you go out of your way for someone who has done nothing for you? Why in the world would people do something for someone when there's nothing in it for you? The world finds that difficult to understand. Why not work everything to your advantage? Why would you go out to help someone who cannot help you in any way? You see, the world does not understand that. So you're going to change in a way that the world does not understand, and it will resist you. But you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you have the wisdom, and you have the insight to follow the instruction of God, and God says, this is the way. This is the way. Now, in our society, there is a rich field for us to witness to that now and to show that change in our lives now because in our society, we have much more of a sense that you're self-seeking. You possibly use other people whenever you can for your advantage, and you're going to be... uh, a fool if you give things uh, away or if you, you know, give in uh, to being uh, good in the sense of, of uh, serving other people. Our world is full of people who need the witness of God's wisdom that you only gain if you give it away. God says we're servants of one another. 
But we have an individualistic world. We have a world in which an individual is all important. And this didn't happen overnight. Because there's a book by William Least Moon called Bowling Alone. And it's about the tendency of people to become more individualistic, more self-centered... And he says in that book that uh, there's more of a tendency for people to go and bowl alone. Now, when you go bowling, you have somebody with you, right? I mean, generally speaking, you have somebody with you. Not that many people bowl alone, you would think. But he began to notice that uh, there were people who were uh, having a tendency to just go by themselves. And there's less joining that occurs and less service that occurs in many areas. For example, in uh, the various lodges, in the community, uh, in the community groups, and so forth, they began to notice that there were fewer people who were joining together with other people. There were fewer people who were uh, who were starting to uh, join together in service clubs and things like that, because people were more individualistic, more self-centered. So we have a lot of people out there now who need to hear the witness and need to hear the wisdom of God, God put things together so that we could serve one another. God put things together such that we gather into groups if we're going to be healthy. God put things together so that we trust in God and that we regularly worship God. So we have a huge mission field before us today. A huge mission field in which we reach out and we say to other people, we need one another, and also you can worship God and be freed of much of the anxiety that you have currently. We have a huge mission field in relation to that. Often we don't think of our own society as being a mission field. We want to go over there somewhere, somewhere across the ocean, We want to go to a place where people are worshiping idols somewhere. But in our own society, we have people who are worshiping self, and we have a mission field here in which uh, the soil has been unturned by and large. So we have a witness in our backyard, in our neighbor. In everyone around us, we have a witness to a new kind of change, a change where we serve one another, a change in which we do things for each other. And as we uh, follow that uh, witness, we, we change. We change even more until we become a renewal, a force of renewal in our world. Now, there are folks who say, well, because the church uh, doesn't have as many members and so forth, uh, the, uh, the voice of religion is not heard as much. They may be right to some degree. They may be right to some degree. But uh, I think one of the things that we fail to see is that God uh, has placed the church here in this time and place to be a witness to be a witness to folks that life can be better, that you can live without the anxiety of having to do everything for yourself, that you can live without the anxiety of worrying about what the next day will bring, that you can live with the joy of living with other people. I, I often, in, in my ministry, would find people who uh, believe that uh, they don't need anyone else. I had someone once who came to me and talked to me in my office about how he didn't need anyone else. As a matter of fact, all other people were not as bright as he was, and he didn't need anybody. And he talked to me for about a half hour about that because he was feeling anxiety. Well, if he didn't need anybody, then he didn't need anybody, right? Yeah. I've talked to many addicts, for example, who don't need anybody as well. But their recovery begins when they serve other people. That's when the recovery starts. We need other people. We need other people all the time. 
because otherwise we're, we're not aware of what's going on in our lives and we lose our identity. So how does faith work? Faith works by letting go and trusting God and changing in witness to the world. But first, we have to let go and let God guide us. One of the sayings that I ran across very often with people in recovery was let go and let God. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we can experience your guiding hand. We thank you that it's not all up to us, that we can be your children and rely upon your guidance. We thank you that you love us with steadfast love, a kind of love which will not let us go and will seek us out wherever we might stray. It is that steadfast love that we depend upon as your children. For you guide us into new ways, you guide us into your, the ways that follow your will at all times. We pray in relation to your guiding hand that you might also be with our nation. During the presidential campaign, there are many issues that circle around. Many of them are old, but some of them are new. And you guide the nations, Lord, because you rule over everything. And in your rule of love and kindness, we pray that you would guide our nation, that you would be with those who lead and defend our nation, and that you would show them your way, your guiding hand. And we also pray for your guiding hand in this congregation. For there are many things that happen in our lives. There are new things that we do. There are decisions to make about college and that sort of thing. And uh, also there are other things as well. And those are things for which we need your guiding hand and your supporting hand. And that is if we find illness or if we find loss, Lord, you are there to uphold us, to carry us. We pray for all of those who are listed in the bulletin as needing your care, Lord. We thank you that you bring your care to them. <clears throat> Our leaders, those who are shut in, those who are ill, they need a special measure of your grace because their needs may be greater in many, in many areas. And yet also we need your grace, each and every one of us, as we make decisions in our lives and as we contend with various things. Help us, Lord, to walk in faith and to trust in your guiding hand, your guiding, healing, supporting hand. And now we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.